things I noticed when I started working with my clients is this kind of misunderstanding about what an archive and uh, how long to keep records for um, and, and how to go about the actual physical how to of keeping your system up to date. I've been using the same system for 30 plus years. It's what I share with all my private clients. And I wanted to just walk you through the steps. So the first thing you have to do is have a place for your, I'm going to use tax archive um, as the thing. You may have other archives if you're a writer or um, have some sort of work product that you have to hang on to reports and things like that. But most of us, I'd say all of us should have a tax situation where we need to keep some things on hand when we do our taxes. Um, some is required, some is all, um, optional, but it's an easy way to think about it. So first you get, and this is going to be heavy, so give me a sec. Um, I use a tub style banker's box. I have a uh, seven years worth of supporting tax documentation in it. And each year is in a folder. I have to take one out. <laughs> so that every year when I switch out my, rotate my files, you pull out the one. So 2014 is the last one I have to hang on to. So I pull out 2014 and I have created a new one. For 2022's taxes. Notice I use the sealed up on the side file pockets. Um, you can get them in a few different widths. I find the uh, one and a half inches usually more than sufficient. Um, the old one goes in the shredder. Easy, right? So that one goes away. <laughs> one of my favorite sounds, paper hitting the floor when you've decided you don't need it anymore. Um, so that creates enough space for the new folder to go in once my taxes are done. When I go to grab the things I need to do my taxes for the year, I have, I keep a notebook because I like to do, I like to pay my bills on the couch. <laughs> so I keep a set of three ring punched um, budgeting sheets and calendars and things. I just put a clip on it and add it to the thing at the end of the year and make my new set for the upcoming year. I take the folder for each of my accounts. Um, this is a savings account I have at my bank. Every folder has two sides, right? There's a left side and a right side. On the left side, I put opening documents for for the account and or any other informational things about the account go on the left side. Statements are filed in the back and I put the newest statement in the back. Now I know most of you have digital files these days. It's the same concept. You don't have to file in the back, but you have a folder um, that has each month's statements um, and or account statements and you almost always have a little bit of paper you have to keep. So it's handy to just know the process, right? You have a place where you keep the informational things and then there's statements. The statements might be online, they might not be, but it, it demonstrates the process, right? So at the end of the year, at the end of December, I take, beginning of January, <laughs> I take all the statements out and any that I need to keep for taxes go into the tax holder. I put a, I staple when I can. I put a clip on ones that are bigger than that. Just tuck them in to the folder of the documents I got to keep for my taxes. This goes back in the drawer. Never have to make that account folder again. You don't recreate it every year. It goes back in the drawer, right where my bank accounts are, in the folder, in the hanging folder marked banking. Ta-da! I got to do my taxes. I have a folder I take to the accountant or I share with the accountant or I put in the box because she has everything online. <laughs> um, but that's all you do. And then you put the book when once the taxes are filed, you put the supporting documentation back into that banker's tote and you put it in the closet or the garage or a high shelf or a low shelf um, and out of the way for a whole year. 
when you get the return from your accountant, you either store it electronically or in a file cabinet because you have to keep the returns forever. But the supporting documentation, anywhere in America, you can do a rotating seven-year system and not have to think about it. Some states, it's much less. And if you're that worried about space, check and see, and you won't have to keep all seven years. Um, but also, if you live in more than one state, you have to file in all the states. So you have to just keep them for the longest amount anyway, just to keep yourself covered. That's how we think about a rotating archive system. There are some things you need to keep forever. There are some temporary pieces that might show up during the year and you have a place to put them in the file with that bank account. And then at the end of the year, when you pull your statements, you can also glance through and see if any of the informational stuff needs to go. Or when you add a new piece of information, remove the old piece. I just got my new insurance cards and things. One card goes in the file, the old one comes out, right? It's a rotating system. One in, one out, one in, one out. Um, and that way you always have the up-to-date information. You don't have to constantly compare which is the right information for today's transaction. Um, that's all it takes, a couple seconds when you process your bills and correspondence folder. From the One Minute Mail Solution Kit, and the Your Complete Paper Solution. It's all the same system broken down in a few different ways. Hear about it enough and it might stick. All right, um, thanks for showing up. Uh, as I said, Your Complete Paper Solution starts on Wednesday. If you want to get in on that, um, you can visit morethanorganized.net slash YCPS. Um, and otherwise, have a delightful day, and I will see you next Monday. Bye.